How can I create the perfect path towards a 700 plus credit score? You can actually already have a 700 plus credit score before 18. Why would someone want to work with you instead of working with just their traditional bank? We optimize your profile to where it's favorable to the banks. So what's the worst thing someone can do to mess up their credit? Not being able to set up auto pay. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Get Nailed podcast, the podcast that teaches you not to get nailed by life. In other words, not get screwed by life. I'm your host, Chris Mo. I'm a high ticket salesman here in LA. I've done over $5 million in construction sales. I own over 50 ATMs all over LA. And I just like talking about a bunch of cool business stuff. I make these videos because I'm on the pursuit towards financial abundance, time, freedom, and joy, aka, I want to make a lot of money with y'all. I want to do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want, while being joyful. And you guys can do the same as well. Today, guys, I got a good little treat for you guys. You guys have kind of already heard our conversation. My special guest, he is pretty much one of my closest friends I have out here in L.A. He's on his shit. Uh, the man is the king of credit, I like to call him. Um, he is the founder of HGO Capital. Anything you know about credit, this guy knows. So listen up, guys, because today we're just going to be talking about credit. And for those of you who want to start a business, he's, he's really into learning and teaching people how to get business credit. You can get up to $100,000 in business credit if you qualify for it. Uh, give it up for my man, Ugo Boss. Hey, ah. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, brother? What's up, bro? Thanks for having me, man. You know, I'm excited to be here, you know, talking to you guys, you know, providing as much value as I can, giving back. You know, that's why I invest into education to give back. So let's get it. Yeah. So what's HGO Capital? So the story behind the name you're referring to? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for uh, me, I read it as Ugo Capital. Is yeah, it, yeah. Because okay. <laughs> you know me as Hugo, yeah, right? Yeah. So you know off the bat. Um, yeah, you know, I, I actually wanted to name just like Hugo Boss, you know, like Hugo Boss was taken. But I mean, I wasn't going to name my company that. But overall, I wanted my company to have part of me, but at the same time, have part of what I am doing and working on in terms of like promoting the business that I do, the services, right? So I was brainstorming multiple different names and actually leveraged AI to help me out and just condense like a list of, you know, different types of names that I can go. And uh, none of them were really hitting. They weren't hitting home. Like I, I read them. I tried reading them with passion, but it didn't work out. So what did I do next? I actually got some of those that I thought were cool, but didn't fit with me. I sent them over to my friends. Hey, like, what do you guys think? You know, and I actually got one from a friend. She gave it back to me. She's like, hey, what about HGO Capital? And I was like, HGO Capital. It's still Hugo technically, right? But I'm not saying Hugo Capital. I'm saying HGO Capital. And it just sit right. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go with this one. So, you know, I, that's, that's where I just went. Like, I, it's a part of me and it's a part of what I'm doing and I'm servicing in terms of my clients. So, I so like that. What services do you offer? Yeah. So, when it comes to services, we're really more helping individuals who are startups, investors, business owners, um, obtain capital, leveraging their current situation, whether they're already having business revenue showing for maybe in the last four months, they can provide bank statements, leveraging that situation to obtain capital. Um, even with our new funding program, getting them um, as soon as 24 hours, some capital approvals. Um, also, if they don't have an existing business, right, if they're just starting up, they want to invest into maybe something like this, right, a podcast, they want to uh, purchase equipment. Instead of having them spend so much uh, time working to raise that capital, we leverage their personal credit situation to go the traditional route of with the banks and obtain capital anywhere from 50K, 100K plus a 0% interest. So yeah, really just helping the, based on their situation, leverage that. Why would someone want to work with you instead of working with just their traditional bank? So when it comes to traditional banker and you doing it on your own, you can do it. Um, you know, there is no negatives to it or automatic denials. However, structuring your profile correctly or a lot more favorable will allow banks to give you high limits in sense of like 50K, like I mentioned, 100K in business credit. You know, someone that is not well versed in the whole credit space or optimizing their profile, you know, they might have just one account reporting on their credit and it says, yeah, they might say they have a 700 plus credit score, but they're solely relying on one account. And that one account might be like, what, a thousand dollar credit limit. 
they go with a bank, submit an application, most likely the bank is going to see, okay, there's not enough to show for that you can handle a lot of money. So we're going to give you a thousand dollars back in a business credit card. And what good is that? Like a thousand dollars, you're limited. Mm -hmm. But if you know how to optimize it, and that's what we do, we optimize your profile to where it's favorable to the banks and they want to lend you more money. They want to give you high limits. So overall, that's where we take care of. We come out with customized plans for them. So it's more like a coaching type of service where you're like, hey, let me look at your, let me look at your resume. Let me look at where you're missing, like credit or what can we do before we submit your application so you have the best opportunity exactly. to get the most amount of money. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's the thing, you know, like you either, you either pay for like information um, to go ahead and put yourself in the best case scenario or you can do the route that majority of people take, which I did in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and try to figure things out myself and learn that way. But what are you doing there? You're actually get paying your time to go through these mistakes, which might lend to a situation where it's going to take even longer now to come back and try to get yourself where you want to be. And how long did it take you to learn all of this stuff? So I actually got into this space in the whole credit credit space uh, just last year. So last year, more in mid, like in June, July, um, I actually saw, it was a little bit before June, I think it was like April or so, I actually saw a Tesla Model uh, X. Um, it said King Credit. So I saw his Instagram, you know, all over his car, and I followed him. And at that time, I was already curious about credit. I was doing like self-education, YouTube, all that, right? And I said, you know what? It might be a good investment, which it was to go ahead and access his network, access his course. Mm -hmm. And I ended up paying for my savings. I think it was 1,500 just to get into his mentorship. Okay. Um, and it allowed me to access so many people already in the credit space. And although, you know, I didn't learn and understand everything at that point, I was connecting with people. I was doing and implementing small things that he was providing in terms of value, right? And through connecting with those people, you know, I started learning a few different things, right? I, uh, they actually referred me to other people to go ahead and learn from, and that's what I did. I followed these other people already in the credit space. I paid for their mentorship. And then lastly, you know, come in March this, this year, I paid for a one-on-one -on -one coaching now to really just scale my business and input, like, operations and systems in place. No, I, I've seen the major difference of, like, say, a couple of months ago and, like, now how you're operating, how you're moving, dude, it's a... A completely different wavelength, I would say. So, congrats. Yes, sir. Really. Appreciate um, that. Appreciate that. You have a Corvette now. <laughs> yeah. And funny story about the Corvette, bro. Um, I was not supposed to get it anytime soon. I was actually planning to get this a few months down the road. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe sometime in October, November, around that time frame. Because I said, you know what? Like, I don't need it right now. But my best friend, um, he was telling me, he's like, dude, you've been renting Corvettes. Like, consistently like maybe every other month or every two months you know for a day two days whatever the case may be he's like why don't you just go ahead and apply and see what happens you know mm -hmm. you don't have to get it just go ahead and see if you get approved and in my head i was like you know what i have some personal loans i just took out i have um you know my auto loan still my tesla i have all these things already reporting you know and my credit card is still great 800 plus and i said you know what it's a 50 50 maybe i'll qualify and i went with my credit union I said, you know what, what the heck? I was bored that day, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the bank, and I did. I went, I submitted an application with the rep there, and within a matter of 30 minutes, hey, you've been pre-approved, right? And you have to provide documentations. But then, a minute later, I get another email that says, hey, that pre-approved, ignore it, pretty much, you've been approved for that 80K loan that I applied for. And I was like, okay exactly what i've been preaching like hey you establish yourself where you have good credit you establish yourself where you have good payments you know overall strong a strong profile the banks will see that and they'll be like you know what we don't need to request documentations from you we trust you enough where we are going to give you this and you just go ahead and use it at your own you know personal usage for whatever you want to use it for and i said okay so I got 80K, all right, let me go ahead and shop around, right? Let me go shop around, started looking at the Corvettes, and the first place I hit was in Monterey Park. And the ideal car that I had in mind was a white car, red interior, black wheels. Okay. Exactly so like that. And that's what I rented uh, right before I went for the, for the application. 
And I went to the spot and they didn't have any Corvettes like that. And he's like, but let me talk to my manager. Let me see what's coming in. The manager, you know, talks to me. I have a white Corvette, red interior, black wheels coming in two weeks from now. I was like, all right, cool. That's a sign. You know, my first sign was I got approved. Second sign, the car that I wanted. The first spot I went to dealership. Started looking around still. You know, I was like, okay, maybe I might like something now that I can get, whatever. Prices are ridiculous on the Corvettes. You know, they, they're really upselling them a lot. Like, I saw some that in a 90K, 100K. I'm just like, uh, we'll see. You know, yeah. um, two weeks come by. I get a text message like, hey, the Corvette just got here. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and negotiate. You know, I'm always talking about business, negotiating, mm-hmm. talk your way into things. So I negotiated with them. Um, I got a free wing on the car, and I got it for 78K. You know, and I said, and that's exactly what I spoke. I said, if I get this at 78K with the wing included, I'm taking it. It's a sign. It's mine. Negotiation. They were going back and forth, back and forth. We closed out the deal, 78K. I got the car, and then boom. No fucking way. <laughs> so it's that whole story behind it, but yeah. So, so leveraging your credit is basically how you got the car. Exactly. You can... It's so powerful, people don't understand because we are not educated on it. Mm-hmm. But there's so much you can do. So much. So educate me. Say um 18 years old. I don't know anything about credit. How can I create the perfect path towards a 700 plus credit score? So you can actually already have a 700 plus credit score before 18. And there's actually a variety of different ways. There are lenders, credit uh, uh, banks pretty much that allow you to add your kids or someone that is 13 years of age starting from what I've seen, add them as an authorized user on one of your credit cards. Mm-hmm. If you're an older sibling, right, or if you're 18 looking into, you know, improving your credit and you want to you wanna scale it up, you know, get a high credit score, have your family members, maybe grandparents already have their credit cards open with already established age you know multiple years open um good payments have them add you onto it and then from there that's going to report on your profile whether you have any credit or not but then that's going to show to the banks like oh he has age already reporting he has a high credit limit already reporting even though it is not primarily yours Mm -hmm. but you're leveraging other people's current situation to help and benefit you to get high approvals on the credit side what, what banks let you add their kids as an authorized user? So I know uh, Capital One allows you to do that. I know uh, Chase overall, um, Navy Fed. There's a variety of different credit cards that allow you at 13. But majority of banks, like as long as you have a social security, you can get added on as an authorized user early on. Okay. So, so let's say I don't have any parents. I don't have any grandparents. I was like, dude, I come from an immigrant family or... I had to run away from home and it's just me. <laughs> I have nobody. Yeah. I have nobody. I have to wait until I'm 18 to even get a bank account. Okay. So I'm 18. How do I get a credit card? Yeah. So there's a variety of ways to get started. Start optimizing your profile. Um, one off the back of top of my head I can think of is a, a credit building a products. So like for instance, Credit Strong. There's It's this platform where you can go ahead and pay monthly for uh, an installment loan to report onto your credit report on a credit profile and what that's doing is as an installment loan it's a different type of account that's showing consistent payment that you're able to handle a certain amount of money so that's going to help you overall boost your credit score just to, just by doing that and it's monthly payments they have a different plans there that you can go ahead and do um second would be you know start talking to people start talking to you know maybe friends that you're cool with that you know, maybe you're really close to their family and they can add you. You don't have to use that card. You just need that card to report on your profile. So start talking to people, you know, see if you can get added on to them as an authorized user. Um, and then third would be there's also a secured credit card where basically if you are, you know, making, what is it, 2000 3000 whatever your income may be, you can open a secured credit card with a bank by using your own money as a down payment as collateral pretty much and then they'll give you in exchange a credit card secure credit card with that same limit so they'll keep that let's say 300 300 that you want to use they'll give you a secured credit card for 300 and that's how you start establishing your credit by doing on-time payments having it open for a few months and then once that shows for it's positive apply for a credit card and that puts you at a better situation does it matter what banks you would go ahead and get 
Oh, yeah. So when it comes to banks, I definitely would recommend going with Chase uh, card first, like Chase Freedom Unlimited, just because Chase has a rule, a 524 rule, where you are not able to go ahead and get approvals if you have more than five credit cards within the last four, 24 months. So they're really strict in terms of their rules. So ideally, Chase would be one of the first few cards I would go for just to start establishing that relationship and not going over the 524 rule. What's the 524 rule? Yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, what they have is not being able, if you have more than five credit cards that you've opened up within the last 24 months, mm -hmm. and let's say for the sixth one you want to go with Chase, you'll get automatically denied. So I have to get Chase. So you don't have to. There's multiple credit cards. Uh -huh. But if you want to optimize your profile and show good relationship with top tier one banks like Chase, I would go with Chase. Got it. Okay, so what's the worst thing someone can do to mess up their credit? Man, there's a couple things. Like, honestly, uh, one, not being able to set up auto pay. So auto pay is something that not every bank offers. Mm -hmm. However, if they do offer, I would have them go ahead and set that up just because we can get busy sometimes. We're working, we have school, whatever the case may be, family stuff, that we forget when the due date is and we don't pay that minimum payment. And then when that happens and then the statement date reports, which is a few days after the due date, and it shows that you missed that payment, guess what? Now you have a late payment reporting on your profile, and late payment is a big deal in terms of just credit, how, how it determines your score. That's actually going to hurt you a lot down the road. So overall, you know, not setting their, uh, their thing on auto pay or just not knowing when the due date is and paying that minimum payment, you know? Yeah, what, what about those credit cards that, I don't know, I, I got a couple friends telling me that they messed up their credit when they were, like, younger because they were applying to an H&M credit card or a Forever 21 credit card. Or would you recommend one of those to start with? Never, never. With store credit cards, they're actually one of the worst credit cards you can have. And that's my personal opinion. You know, some people might say like, oh, but you get deals, this and this and this. Yes, but in, in terms of, you know, being able to go down the road where you want to get like uh, good, fi uh, good loans with top tier one banks, like they're going to look at your report and they're going to be like store credit cards are the lowest tier when it comes to just in general helping your report because one like it's a store credit card something is just limited to that place itself or two it's like they give you super low limits like i have not seen someone with a 20k 30 40k limit on a store card they'll ideally give you like 300 dollars, 400 dollars, and that's really low in terms of store credit so when you're trying to go ahead and apply for another card they're going to go ahead and see, all right, well, let me see where your current credit cards are. Let me see your limit. And what they do is comparable credit. So they'll be like, oh, you have a $400 uh, credit card with this store. We're going to do something similar. We're going to give you a $300, a $400 credit card. So it's comparable credit. So that matters a lot. Wow. Stores always give you low, low limits. What about travel cards? Because I've seen a lot of people trying to travel hack every now and then. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? Like in terms of what would be some good credit cards? Yeah, what would be a good credit card to like get for travel? Or, tra or do you consider travel cards just as bad as store cards? Travel cards, um, they have partnerships. So, you know, sometimes they have like, let's say Southwest and then you see Amex on it or something like it's, you, you know, you see the banks, Amex, you see them partner with other, other, um, other companies. Overall, these travel cards are good in terms of points, the reward system, how they, how they go about it. That's why they're travel cards. Ideally myself, I personally have not gone too deep into that area just because, you know, I'm currently focusing more on just building my business, overall structuring, proper credit profile. But I have a few friends who use these travel cards who, get certain credit cards that give high rewards and points, you know, point system. The only one that I use right now is like my built credit card. Why? Because that's a no brainer. Like a built credit card is through Wells Fargo. They, um, they allow you to pay your rent via check or online portal as a, it'll come out like as a checking account. It gives you numbers to go ahead and put in mm -hmm. online portal. It pays your rent and you just pay off your credit card. So what are you doing there? You're establishing credit. And then two, at the same time, you're getting points by paying your rent, which you can use for traveling, staying at hotels, flying out, and so forth. You have, that's how you pay your rent then? Yeah, so that's how I'm able to stay at highest for free, sometimes get free upgrades. Get free um, Corvettes. <laughs> free cars. And then the bill card actually has a rental insurance, which is good. You don't need to purchase rental insurance at the actual place oh, company. No so yeah, it covers, it covers your insurance on that end. So yeah. 
that's mm. how I've been able to get cars, you know, and if, you know, $55 a day, nice Range Rovers and all that kind of stuff already taken care of in terms of insurance. Well, I'm definitely going to get one of those cars, especially <laughs> considering I'm going to be moving. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be, I, I think I've seen, I think it was one of those, like, billionaires guys that, like, the ones on Shark Tank that uh-huh. eventually founded it or something like that. Yeah. I think he found that, or he founded it based on, like, his kids here. He's all like, I think he's, he asked his kids, he's all like, hey, like, what are the chances of you paying your rent off with your credit cards? And then he was all like, yeah, dude, like, it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. Um, I know from where myself, there was a couple trips in the beginning when I was traveling. Two or three of my trips were just paid off with just my credit cards. There you go. Specifically for just gas. I would literally just use that one because I think I was getting 3% back on my Chase business card mm-hmm. for gas. Mm-hmm. And, dude, I traveled literally every single day so many freaking miles. It's ridiculous. That yeah. I ended up getting like over like a thousand bucks, and I'm like, dude, that's a whole entire trip. Yeah. Um. So I can only imagine how much they're gonna be giving for rent. Yep. So, um, what about like credit repair services? Is that what you do too? So credit repair services, we don't uh, push it too much in terms of like promoting that, just because um, we're more focused solely on funding, being able to help someone structure themselves correctly. But if one of our clients needs it, you know, in terms of like removing collections or negative items, um, then we'll go ahead and do that. We'll do the dispute methods uh, to go ahead and get those negative items out of the way and then set them up for funding. But ideally, it's it's more funding solely on that. Yeah. So more like business owners, huh? Yeah, business owners, startups and all that. But like I said, if they need it, we'll do it. If they happen to send a referral, we'll go ahead and also do it for them. But in terms of promoting it like that, you know, as as our business, that's what we're doing. Not really. Yeah. How much how much money can you get a business owner? Uh, if they're properly structured. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as 14 days, you know, if they're properly structured, ready to go, we can get we can get the minimum 150 K all the way to 250 K even 350 K with some of it being zero percent interest on that end. So why don't why doesn't everyone just go through that go down this route? You know, and I asked myself that same question, but I, I started reflecting how was I back then? Uh-huh. Right. Back then, me was more of. I want to save the most amount of money. I want to be able to figure out everything myself because there's so many things that we hear about scams online, you know, people in general. You know, for the most part, we grew up with this mindset where it's always about like my parents save, save, save. Don't don't put your money in places you don't know. Save. Don't use your credit card. You know, go ahead and pay cash. Cash is king. All that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. which then clouds our way of making even better decisions to level up to a next phase down the road right so i feel like a lot of people are you know have that kind of environment where their family are probably telling them the same things that i was told right and it actually took time by associating myself with other individuals who were already at a different level to expand my thought process and be like you know what you know you're you're telling me you're making 40k 30k a month because you paid for information that got you there. There's something that I'm not doing that I need to do to get there. Mm-hmm. And slowly I started taking small steps, investing into small courses, right? Like a thousand, thousand five hundred that I paid in the beginning. And I started seeing value, maybe not fully in terms of understanding how the whole business works and all that kind of stuff, but networking with individuals who already were there or were further ahead. Right. And then yeah. slowly my mind started expanding, expanding. And that's when I said, you know what? Recently, when I paid that one on one coaching, that was a high ticket thing, like over 20K. Like it was just more of, hey, this is an investment. I always tell myself that I'm capable of more. And I've always been, you know, uh, you know, excited about business. So why can't I make it? What's so special about me that I will not make it and create that success for me? Yeah, I'm not that special. So I will create it. And I just jumped on it. And because of that reason, it's just been scaling like crazy. It's been booming like crazy business. No, absolutely, dude. I tell everyone, if you want to go ahead and get some cheat codes or like hacks, paying for someone's advice or paying for just coaching is going to go ahead and accelerate how many years it takes for you to actually learn a bunch of these things. Like one of the things that I do is just read a book a month. So I'm reading from people that are older than me. I've paid for mentorships myself. And I'm like, dude, every single time I do this, I'm like skipping years and years ahead. That's why sometimes when I meet older guys and they're like, how old are you? How do you know all this stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, I just pay people. I I just get access to people that I normally wouldn't. And I'm like, that's literally the cheat code. Um, And then even in today's world where now we have YouTube, we have podcasting, we have so many different options of like Mm -hmm. knowledge where, dude, there's no way you can't 
be successful at a really young age at this point. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So then what are your thoughts on, like, say, people that give up on their credit and say, like, you know what? I have bad credit. This is not, like... I can't get business funding. I, ideally, the only reason why someone will lose hope is because they don't know how to get themselves out of that situation. And that's why I mentioned, you know, being able to associate yourself or start listening to someone who went through that and got themselves out is super critical because then from there, you start to see that it is possible to get out of that situation, right? Everything is fixable in a sense of these negative situations where maybe you miss payments or maybe you uh, have a collection item reporting. Like, that's why there's credit repair services. That's why there's uh, people who have continuously invested to help individuals get out of those kind of situations and help them obtain that capital down the road. And that's what I do with some of my clients. Some of my clients are not in the best positions and they might have one collection because something happened, life situations happen, but ideally they are, you know, they reflected, they know what to do now and not to do. So those are the kind of people that I'm always teaching them, educating them about like, hey, this is what you need to do to prevent this from happening again. And then, you know, they execute on it. We remove the negative and then we start getting them set up for proper funding. So, okay. so yeah. So then for like those people, do you, do you think the credit system that we use, it's different, right? The credit system that we use for people and the credit system that we use for business, is it the same or? Yeah, it's the same because all business credit, anything on the business side, it's actually, they, they look at your personal credit. So before you get, that's why I said it's, it's important to set up on a personal side to access high amounts on the business side. So anything on the business end, even if it's, if it's separated in terms of personal and business, they'll still look at your personal. So it's, it goes same to same. What do you think about someone inventing a dating app based on your credit? You know what? Um, I think when it comes to that, like credit really, credit really speaks volumes. Like someone with a good credit overall profile, not just score, because score anybody can have, but mm -hmm. profile talks more volumes it really helps identify where this person is in life like if i were to see someone with multiple accounts and on-time payments and like super top tier like credit profile i would be like this guy knows he has an action place uh, an action plan in place where you know he already is know what he's doing to just level up his life compared to someone that maybe is just sitting on one account on their credit report and they're just relying on that card it makes me think they're limiting their possibilities to enjoy and level up their life because in terms of obtaining a home, in terms of obtaining a vehicle, right? So that speaks volumes. And I think when it comes to dating, like it's important to choose the right partner. And if you can look, because a lot of breakups happen because of finances, right? Mm -hmm. Finances. So overall, you know, if, if we're able to see on a dating app, their credit profile and all that kind of stuff, it would honestly intrigue me. I would be like, you know what? Like, there's women who are bossing out here who know what they want to do, who are establishing, putting us off in the best case. And if you're like that, that it's a perfect match. Like maybe not everything, but at least you have something to connect with that have that has the same ideal go and route. So how I many, like it. How many people do you think would have like bad credit? Oh man, sure. <laughs> to be honest with you, not many people would qualify on that <laughs> on that dating app, man. Like Overall, majority of America is in debt because, like, financial literacy is not something taught in school. And overall, like, optimizing credit and all that kind of stuff is, like, sheesh. Not a lot of people, honestly, you know? But as, that's why we're here. That's why people like myself come up and we're targeting audiences. We're targeting, we're, we're marketing, we're doing all this because we want to help prevent this. And at the same time, this is why you're also seeing, you know, a lot more millionaires coming on. Things are changing. Times are changing and it's just... You know, more people have to step up and start taking a hold of the life responsibility and doing that. But as of now, yeah, majority of America is, you know, it's been like this. Like, they're just, they're not financially literate, you know? No, I know, dude. I keep meeting people that are, like, from not America and internationally, I would say, more on the European side. And their education system is completely different. Mm -hmm. And they're a lot smarter than we are. And it's, I don't, I don't even, it, it, it's really sad. I really don't understand where we're going wrong or... I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> hoping YouTube can change it all because education is there and for those people that look for it. So then, uh, Ugo, what's the game plan? Like, how does someone say, hey, Ugo, I need help? Like, do you, like, charge for your services? Or how does someone go about getting coaching from you? 
Um, so in terms of the process, how we go yeah. about it. Yeah. So yeah, so with us, you know, the reason why we're different too and we stand out uh, amongst other companies is because we don't charge anything up front. You know, the way that we work and we function, um, and as I keep on growing my team, ideally what we would do is we would schedule a consultation call first to see what the situation is of the person. From there, we would go ahead and schedule a second call uh, as soon as 48 hours where we create a customized plan on what to target, what to do, depending if they need the funding immediately or they need the funding later down the road, we'll create that customized plan tailored to them specifically. From there, you know, let's say this person is ready for funding. They want to get things going faster. Uh, we'll go ahead and optimize it. We have in-house products that can help them to optimize their profile. Uh, from there, um, we start submitting applications once their profile is set up good. And once we get them that funding, we'll charge on the back end. So after they see those results happen, those approvals, and they get that money, then we'll charge them on the back end, and which we charge a 10% on that end. So um, ideally, yeah, this is one of the reasons why many people like to work with us and are interested in us because that's how we function. Compared to other companies that I've seen, uh, they actually, and I, I even tried it myself in the beginning, reached out to a few companies, they were charging me 10K up front. 7k up front even i've heard some people charge 15k up front um recently someone that i know his clients they actually paid this company 15k up front to get funding and there was like little to no communication next thing you know a few months down the road they filed for bankruptcy and they just they didn't exist anymore and they lost that 15k up front so that's crazy so they were just it's like not even a sure thing that they're gonna get approved did they go through any other services I think it's just depending how every company functions. Every company functions differently. So, there, you know, just like there's a lot of scams, there's companies that only care about profits and don't care about being able to provide value, being able to, you know, actually assist their clients to the full extent of helping them out. So it just depends who you go with. And that's why it's important to look at who is the owner? Who is the owner? How does he carry himself? How does she carry herself? You know, are they continuously investing, uh, networking with like-minded individuals? What are they doing? So I, I think that would be a great way to uh, go about it when doing business with someone. Mm -hmm. Who is the owner? What like how well invested are they in, in terms of their community or just whatever with their people, with their clients? So you know? so who is the owner of HGO Capital? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about him. Yeah, so you know it's it's myself. You know, growing up, you know, my whole thing has always been to. Uh, provide value to people, right? But I was always very limited to a lot of things. And through my entrepreneurial journey, I joined network marketing businesses. I started learning the value of helping people. When you help people, there is no questions about you getting business for yourself. Business will come, right? And for the longest time, because of the way I grew up in a low socioeconomic status environment, um, you know, it was always about like how to make more money, how to make more money. So although I understood and I knew that, you know, by helping people genuinely will bring you business, subconsciously, I still had the whole, oh, how can I make more money? How can I profit more by doing certain things that I want to do, side hustles and all that? So um, with time, consistency, with time and continuously uh, socializing myself uh, with individuals that already have that mindset, I eventually like switched over and it clicked where it's like, I see it now, I feel it now, genuinely, where, you know, I don't mind getting on a call with someone that values my time, and that I can provide value based on what I learned. I don't mind that right now. It's like, I still have a little bit of time, not as much as before. But like, even on my Instagram, I've put like, hey, if you guys want to meet up with me, whatever, you know, send me a DM. And I've gotten on calls with a few people for free, free of charge for them. Why? Because I, I always wish that someone would have done that for me in the beginning. But at the same time, I didn't follow anyone like that that was invested in themselves. But yeah, it's just more about continuously serving, servitude. That's my biggest key thing. I love serving people. I love being able to get that uh, fulfillment of someone telling me like, hey, because of what you told me here, six months down the road, I've been able to change the way that I think, the way that I go about my life and all that. So that's what I'm about, servitude. I love that. I love that. And then that's the reason why we're doing this podcast, guys. Um, I don't want you guys to get screwed over in life, screwed over by all the scams that are out there. Yes, so sir. if you guys need some business funding, hit my boy up. 
What is your Instagram? Where should they follow you? Yeah, so you can follow us at HGO underscore capital. You'll see my face immediately. So from there, you know, you can go ahead and just give us a follow. Send us a DM if you have any questions, want to get on a consultation call. You know, we can go ahead and do that. So, yeah, pretty easy to find us. And then from there, you can, there's a link that you can download our digital business card. And then just get pretty much all our information, our website, our text number, phone number, email, and everything's there. Got it. Well, guys, I hope you guys learned something today. Honestly, guys, I've learned a lot about credit just talking to you over the times that we went out to dinner a couple of times. So this guy knows this stuff. I fully endorse him 100%, dude. Awesome. Um, so if you guys have questions, anything about credit, anything about business funding, this guy's the man. Follow him. Give him a encourage him to make some more content because he's been slacking on that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, more content. I'm, I'm, I'm filming today, so. We're getting more content out there. Yep. Love that. Well, do you have any last words before we head out? Uh, you know, the last thing would be, si se puede, you can do it. You know, I'm always posting it. You know, it's, it's you know, my, if you see my posts, me traveling, me doing all these things, it's not for flexing. It's more for inspiration because I did not come from money. I did not come from a business mindset. I worked for it. And if I can go ahead and create this lifestyle, so can you. So it's, it's just all about continuously staying consistent persistent and keep on dreaming big so let's get it i love that guys well guys make sure you guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'll see you guys next time let's go bye